Welcome to the Crazy Head Kevin. So another video here on acids, bases, and titrations. So let's get started here with this next example, which is example number two of a titration problem. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we're going to do titration example number two. This is very similar to example number one, okay? But there are some significant differences. This time we're going to do a weak base, and in this case it's going to be ethanolamine for the weak base and it's going to be titrated with a strong acid. So let's look at what this will look like graphically. Here is the graph. The, the graph is very similar in that the y-axis is pH. The x-axis is going to be the volume of the strong, which is what you're titrating it with, which in this case is going to be hydrochloric acid. That's HCl. Okay, and we're going to be titrating this along the entire path, but there are some very important things to notice. It is a weak base, so you are starting off with a pH that is certainly greater than 7. Okay, and then this section here, even though we are adding acid to, to this, in fact, a strong acid to this, you should see that it takes a significant amount of volume of acid in order for that pH to change drastically. And this section here is the buffer region of this weak base because you have conjugate pairs of that weak base, the ethanolamine, and its respective conjugate acid, and that will make a, a buffer. Okay, we're going to do three points along this titration as we do all titrations. And the first point here is going to be before the titration begins. We're going to be using an ice table for this. Okay, the second point is the halfway or the midway point. And the important concept and also which drives the math is that the concentration of the conjugate pairs are equivalent. Okay, that is also that's, it, that's important on this is that half the volume that's required at the equivalence point of the HCl is required at the halfway or the midway point. Therefore, the halfway or the midway point the, in terms of terminology. Another important point about this is that the pH is going to equal the pKa. I'll show you, out the, show you that mathematically. All right, our third point is going to be the equivalence point. Okay, and the equivalence point, the concept and the math that drives this is that the, the moles of the acid are going to equal the moles of the base, or the moles of the base are going to equal the moles of the acid. Okay, a new equation is going to be written. You're going to switch the K. You're going to do an ice table just like before, um, very similar. Notice that the pH is going to be less than 7 in this case because you are titrating it with a strong acid. Okay, and this equivalence point is the inflection point along the graph. Okay, now on this particular titration that we're doing with all the math associated with this, the equivalence point volume is going to be 26.3 milliliters of hydrochloric acid that is added. Now I'm going to come back to the halfway or the midway point, and the halfway or the midway point is half that equivalence point volume, which would be 13.15 milliliters. Okay? All right, so we've got three points to do here on this titration. We're going to do the first one, and this is going to be our part A here today. Okay. All right, so we've got 25 milliliters of a 0 0.010 molar ethanolamine. Okay, there's the formula HO, CH2, CH2, NH2. That is a ethanolamine. This solution is going to be titrated with a 0 0.0095 molar hydrochloric acid solution. We're going to get three points. We're going to first calculate the pH before the titration begins. Number two, we're going to calculate the pH at the halfway or the midway point. And number three, we're going to calculate the pH at the equivalence point or what we call the end point of the titration. The other important component that we need to know here for this problem is we need to know the base dissociation constant for ethanolamine. You would have to look this up in a table in the appendix in the back of the book or the chemistry of or the CRC. That is the handbook of chemistry and physics. It happens to be a Kb of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5. That times 10 to the negative 5 is letting you know that this is a weak base. Okay. All right. So for a weak base titration with a strong acid, we're going to follow these steps. And these are very similar steps with a weak acid with a strong base titration. That is, before titration, we're going to do an ice table. At the halfway or the midway point, we're going to write the equation, which is the same equation as the... Um, before titration equation, and we're gonna. What drives this is the concentration of the conjugate pairs are equivalent. Being that that is the case, the pH will equal the pKa. 
the equivalence point or the end point. We're going to calculate the moles of base, in this case ethanolamine. Then we're going to calculate the moles of acid, and it will be the same as the moles of base of ethanolamine that we had. That's the definition of the equivalence point or the um, end point. Okay, we're going to calculate the total volume based on the volume of uh, weak base that we had to begin with and the amount of hydrochloric acid that is necessary at the equivalence point. Sum those up, we will get our total volume. We're going to calculate the concentration of the conjugate acid to ethanolamine, and that concentration will be our new that we're going to use for our ice table. We're going to write a new equation. We're going to switch the K, and of course, we're going to do a new ice table. Okay, and hopefully you got some predictions as to what the pH will be. Okay, that's really important here. So it enables you to get a numeric value for the pH and then compare it to what you would predict it to be. So the pH before titration, we have a weak base and no acid added. Well, our pH is going to be greater than 7 because we only have a weak base. At the halfway or the midway point, and if you refer back to the graph on this same lecture here, you should see that that is within the buffer region. And if it's within the buffer region, that pH is going to be greater than 7. Now, at the equivalence point or the end point of this calculation here, we have added an equal number of moles of acid at, that you had of moles of base. And since the strong acid overwhelms the base, then of course the pH is going to be less than 7. And again, this will not be a pH of 7. The pH of 7 at the equivalence or the um, at the equivalence or the end point will only be 7 if it's a strong acid titrated with a strong base or a strong base titrated with a strong acid. Okay? All right. Oh, a little advertisement right in the middle here. You can donate to my website and get a sticker. It's a crazy hat sticker. Super cool, isn't it? It's super cool. These go on hydro flasks. They go on the back of your computer. Oh, maybe on, on your car even. Okay, or it, you can also donate to my website and get a t-shirt, a crazy hat chemistry t-shirt and on the back, super cool. Check it out. That is super awesome, isn't it? Okay, so we're gonna keep on going here. All right, so before titration begins calculation. We're going to use an ice table to determine the pH based solely on the ethanolamine since hydrochloric acid, the strong acid, has not yet been added. So we need to write the formula for ethanolamine, that's aqueous, that's HOCH2CH2NH2 plus water, that's a liquid. Now we need to write the products. The products are based on knowing that this is ethanolamine, it is a base so it will produce hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ion is the conjugate to water. Now I need to write the conjugate to the ethanolamine. So the um, conjugate to water is hydroxide, and therefore, where does that hydrogen ion go? It attaches to the ethanolamine to make the conjugate acid to the ethanolamine, which is a base. So therefore, I get HOCH2CH2NH3 with a 1 plus charge. That's the conjugate acid to ethanolamine and then the hydroxide ion. You should see that both the reactant side and the product side have a net charge of zero. Okay, that's important that the net charge is the same. Okay, and I have written the conjugate pairs based on the addition or subtraction of a single hydrogen. Okay, we're going to do an ice table with this. That is initial change in equilibrium. We're going to look at our initial concentration of the ethanolamine, that 0 0.010 molar. The water, we don't have to worry about. We're going to scratch that out. Just like on any equilibrium problem, um, and, and this is an acid-base equilibrium problem, but like on any equilibrium problem, what do we have on our product side? Nothing initially. Nothing initially. And then the change. Since we have something on the reactant side, we're going to decrease the reactants and make more products. We're looking at our stoichiometric coefficients, which are ones across the board on this entire problem. So it's going to be a minus 1x, don't have to worry about the water, plus 1x, plus 1x. Now we're going to add up our initial and our change columns and come up with our equilibrium set here. That is 0 0.010 minus x for the ethanolamine, nothing for the water. The conjugate acid to ethanol, ethanol, ethanolamine is going to be x and hydroxide is going to be an x. Now what we need to do is we need to write the Kb expression. Remember, any K is products over reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. 
So I've got that right there, the Kb, that's these, the conjugate acid to ethanolamine times hydroxide ion divided by ethanolamine. I'm going to plug in these equilibrium values and the Kb that was given to me in the initial part of this problem here. And so that's 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5. That's the Kb for ethanolamine. I've got um, x squared because it's x times x in the numerator. And then in the denominator is 0 0.010 minus x. Now, I'm going to ask this very important question because am I going to be using the quadratic yes or no? And the answer to this question here will determine whether or not I'm going to be using the quadratic. So if 100 times the k, that's 3.2 times 10 negative 5, if that value is less than the initial concentration, the initial concentration is 0 0.010, if that is true, of which it is here, then we're going to get rid of the minus x term there in the denominator. So now we're going to solve for x. So that's the Kb, which is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0 0.010. Take the square root of that, and we get x. And x is equal to 5.7 times 10 to the negative 4. Now I'm going to look at what I have um, outlined in the blue dashed line there. What does x equal? x equals the concentration of the conjugate acid to ethanolamine. x also equals the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So what do I have? The concentration of the hydroxide ion, which is 5.7 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Now I need to solve for the pH. There's a variety of different ways of which you can solve for the pH based on this hydroxide ion concentration. I'm going to do one of these, and that is take the pOH, and that is the negative log of the hydroxide. That will give me this value of pOH. It has two decimals. That's 3.24, okay? Now, that value right there is the pOH. I need the pH. So remember, pH plus pOH is equal to 14.00. So I'm going to plug in this value of 3.24 into that equation of pH plus pOH is equal to 14, and I'm going to solve for the pH and that pH will be 10.76, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, this is basic as you would have predicted at the very beginning because this is a weak base and you have not added any of the acid yet at this point in time. Hopefully that makes super a lot of sense here for you. Now, you should verify this number based on your graphic of which you have done previously. Okay, I am the crazy hat chemist, and of course, I can't end any of these videos without a crazy hat, and this is most certainly a crazy hat. I think I'm a uh, giraffe. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please pl pass on my YouTube channel to all your cool chemistry friends or anybody that likes giraffes. All right, see you later. Bye now.